So this is what I'm going to use for my warp. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go because I didn't plan this out. This is literally like a wing it, fly by the seat of my pants thing. I wanted to use this. If you don't remember this, it is the yarn that um, in July was like a head to head challenge with an art bat and um, it was the Queen of Hearts themed. I wanted to use this for warp and it is strong enough if it's a rigid head of loom. It doesn't need to be quite as strong for that. But I didn't have enough to do a whole scarf. So I have this tub. I don't know if you'll be able to read it, but it says singles leftovers. So whenever I finish a project, the leftover goes into this tub unless it's more than two full skeins. I know I have really strange and rigid rules, but that's how I do it. I have a separate tub for what I call smaller amounts. So it'd be two skeins or more. And when I'm gonna look for a project like this where I just need, you know, I don't know, X number of yards, but not a lot, um, I always go to this bin and then here's an example. So I was gonna do all these pumpkins. Aren't they cute? Here, let me come in. For fall and I just went to my bin and pulled out all these colors that I thought would make good pumpkins so gray brown red orange and then a bunch of different greens and small amounts and I use those to make my pumpkins that's the kind of thing that I would normally use that bin for I knew I wanted to add some fur I know I could be playing with fire we're gonna see what happens I really think it's gonna be fine this stuff's pretty strong and I'll just be very gentle on it as I'm weaving. And then this is gonna be my weft. Um, I don't think it's gonna show up as dark as it is, but it's a nice deep red. So, and it's gonna be plain, except I might add a little fur in the weft also. Both of these furs will be in the warp. And I think also some of this gray, but we'll see. So, I don't know, can you see this? Yeah. So I'm gonna wind this. I already have my warping bar all set up. I don't know if you guys remember this, but you'll see how it works because I'm gonna actually put the film on this. And then right now, oh hey, there's my buddy. Um, the loom is set in place and this is in my dining room. The table's moved to the side and I'm gonna use those weights to weight the table down. <laughs> there he goes. What's the matter, buddy? And then um, a friend of ours just brought me this adorable sewing stand and then I'll show you guys something fun. Every year we have everybody sign a tablecloth at Thanksgiving and this year I'm going to embroider all the signatures so that they don't fade because we've noticed with washing they do fade a little. So I'm getting ready to embroider. So that's fun too. But anyways, maybe you guys will want to take a look at that when it's done. I don't know. So let's get warping. Woo!
Okay, so you can see right here, all these pegs have one inch worth of warp rolled up on them. And then if you look at the edge, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I think you will though. See, there's like a channel that runs down there and there is a big old screw sticking up out of it. So there's another piece that goes in the channel. So what I do is drop it on and then this is the only bummer right here it's clamped so what I'll do is make sure I hold it really really carefully so it doesn't move when I unclamp it And then I drop it back down and I will actually reclamp it. Oops. Because I don't want it to move while I do the other side. Now you can see the other side. It's a little dark, sorry. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to hold it still while I take off the clamp. Let that drop down. Okay. So then you've got these little wing nuts. They close down over it and hold the warp so it can't move. And there is actually one in the middle too. Can you see? Yep. And I still have that clamp just because I really don't want it to move while I'm getting ready to wind it. So, I mean, I think you can see that. That totally makes sense, right? Because then that warp is squeezed in that channel and it really can't move. And then I'll literally take, you guys know, I like to use this Mylar stuff when I wind my warp up to separate it. So I'll take a sheet, lay it right on top of the warp. Take off this little clamp. Okay, so I've got it wound up. It takes like two minutes all the way up to the loom. So what I'm gonna do now is first tighten up a few things because as you can see, the fun fur, there was just a lot more per row because it's harder to get it straight. So I'm gonna tighten those up a little bit back here um, on the apron bar. You can't quite see it. Back here on the apron bar, I'm going to tighten those up a little and then I'm going to go ahead and just roll this beam and unroll the warping bar at the same time with my two hands.
So here I'm just going to knot across in little one inch bundles. This just allows you to lash the warp onto the front apron bar with less waist and also to adjust the tension a little bit more easily. All that's left really is to weave. So here I'm gonna hem stitch. You can see there is some white waist yarn here and I wanted to keep the fringe very, very short on this so I wanted to make sure I had a good tight hem stitch. I'm just gonna stitch right across. 